there. Getting into this, first question is from David Banks via Facebook. He sent this to us, and his question was, is there any benefit to buying second-hand boards as you progress until you figure out what brand type suits your style? And I kind of see this as a as a yes or a kind of is kind of how I see the answer to this one a little bit. Uh, there's definitely a benefit to it if you want to be a little bit more hyper specialized. If well, no. you're like so, like if you're really to me at least, uh, like if you're like trying to figure out, do I want to be a jib kid? Do I want to be a jump kid? I'm looking for backcountry, and you have absolutely no clue then buying secondhand boards can be a huge benefit to you because you can get those boards that are specialized in those areas to help you really get a feel for what that kind of zone of snowboarding feels like. On the other hand, there's plenty of boards out there that you can get and then you don't have to worry about buying secondhand in order to save on money because you don't know if you're even going to keep it or like that style. Plenty of one board quiver action style stuff out there too. So this is the way I looked at it. You're starting out and you could go drop say 480 to 530 for a board mm -hmm. just a board right yeah. there right or you could pick up a used board from some dumbass that quit snowboarding but had bought something that they shouldn't have because they watched a good ride review and, sure or did you see the teton gravity review on the ultra mountain twin no good for beginners so they watch something like that but let's say yeah. this guy let's say dave knows how to ride but he's looking for something there's going to be someone that buys shit that they should. Sure. So here's the thing. You get the board for 250 Maybe you con them down to 200 or 150 That person's like, whatever, it's out of my sight, out of mind. I take the loss. I tried. It wasn't for me. He's saving now a couple hundred bucks. What can you do with a couple hundred bucks? Put it towards a season pass mm -hmm. or lift tickets or something. Or you can trip. use that money to ride more. And if totally. you can ride more, you'll develop your style more. And if you develop your style more, you'll be able to know what you need to ride. I mean... Mm -hmm. I always look at it as the average snow person that snowboards, not a snowboarder, goes seven to ten days a year. Right. That is a long gap between riding. And so they're limited. But suddenly, if they're going from that seven to ten to suddenly riding 25 to 30, mm -hmm. that's more time on a board. That's more time to develop a style. That's, there's that. I think it really lets you... Now, here's here's the downside to this question. I see people, they're like, I got a board for 50 bucks. Yeah, it's also 25 fucking years old. It's got 12 millimeters of camber, a foot and a half of setback. Full cap construction. Full cap construction, a 4x4 four four insert pack. Mm -hmm. Or my favorite is when it's got something completely fucking off the wall. I had a guy tell me the other day that he, he had a five-hole mounting pattern on his boards and was I was it like, baseless? I, and it was a Burton and I was like, Do you mean it's a three hole and you're putting five on it? Yeah. Like and he couldn't he he started arguing with me, telling me I didn't know what I was talking about. And I was like, You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. I was like, You're putting too many screws in that fucking thing. Yeah. But it, it, this is the thing, it's like when you get stuff that's that old, you're only hindering yourself. Yeah. It's not a fun thing to go and ride. Right. So I think buying secondhand, especially if you're in a major metropolitan area with people that are a little more affluent, that are mm -hmm. stupid, you can take advantage of it. I've Definitely. seen some crazy-ass deals. Shit, I've I'm, sold some stuff for some crazy-ass deals. I've sold stuff that was barely just available that year for under 200 bucks, 500, 600 dollar boards for under 200 bucks because I was desperate for money. So you can get stuff that had like 10 days on it max. So, so I always take the approach of if a company tells me to keep something because it costs too much for them to ship it or it's too much of a logistical nightmare, mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, just do something with it. Uh, if I don't give it away or donate it to the Shred Foundation or anything like that, it's $150 for boards. Does not matter if it was ridden one day. Doesn't yeah. matter if it was ridden 100 days. It, it's $150 for a board. Bindings are about 80 to 100 when I sell them like that. But mm -hmm. that's... but. I've gotten to the point now where I don't even like posting online because I get too many stupid questions from stupid people. I'm like, look, it's new. Here's the review. I wrote it for a review. It's fucking done. Like, I'm not going to go down there and tell you, like, where every little minor surface scratch is or if I farted on it or some shit. Mm -hmm. So I think for Dave's question, it does totally make sense. Yeah, absolutely. And th this is coming from people that are largely funded 
from only new sales. Yeah. And I tell you, it's like if you can save money and go shred more, fucking do it. We'd rather you shred more than spend the extra couple hundred dollars that yeah. might get us a five dollar commission. Like, no, it would be more than that. Well, whatever it ends up being. We'd rather you ride more than us get the little bit of commission. I'm playing the long game on so. this one. You ride more, you get better at snowboarding, you buy more snowboards, you That's get to the right. point where you start buying more new snowboards, I make money in the long run. Yep. Then I can pay Kevin. Then Kevin doesn't have to whore himself out and sell all his stuff for 150 bucks. It's to exhausting, do. guys, all right? I know, and Alan keeps saying he'd give us $10,000 for you. No, well, I, mean, I could buy a new truck for that. He'll buy you a new truck. <laughs> He might then wear you as a skin suit in said new truck. That doesn't really help me. You'd be skinless. I think I need that. You, um, and I need my skin. I don't know. I've seen enough horror movies. I feel like those people live for a little while. They're just missing their faces. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. All right. Anyways, uh, let's move on to another question. Yep. 